Okay, so we have some scale formulas to play with. Now let's check out some pick hand techniques that will be something that will make your soloing sound a bit more funky. And as we've seen, that's founded on 16th notes and getting things to be more syncopated. Well, another thing is dynamics and getting things to pop. So two ways that I do that are with two techniques, one called power wrist picking, and another one hybrid picking, which is much more common. Let's check out the power wrist picking thing first, and we're going to do that within uh, the scales that we just checked out. You know, So let's go right to the fifth position, minor pentatonic and minor blues, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So power wrist picking incorporates the go strokes that we first learned in uh, the rhythm section. And also, we need to incorporate that fret hand muting techniques because this is what's going on. Instead of me just playing, say, a simple rhythm like this or a simple lick idea like this, which is cool enough, but I want it to have more depth to it. I want it to have more dynamics. I want it to have more power. So the way I do that is I employ a strumming stroke or more of a, a powerful stroke, you know, that's founded in my wrist, you know, or centered on my wrist, hence the name, power wrist technique, and I do this. The way that I made the muting happen is I used the finger that I'm fretting to lean over on the next string down to make contact with it. So when I make the harder pick attack, I'm definitely going to hit at least two strings, maybe three. I'm trying to just do two. But that finger makes sure that I only hear the one note that I want to hear. So I set up an exercise for you. Uh, the first one here, I'm going to show it to you at 65 beats per minute. Uh, where I'm going to make use of that scale. I'm just going to walk down, and that's going to be actually the first part of the sequence. But let me play it for you. So here we go. Two, three, four. Again. So what I did is I simply just descended sections of the scale and I used that power wrist picking and it just gave it so much more life than just going You know, there, there's no funk element there. Got totally funky when I started incorporating that, that power wrist. In exercise two, we'll do another power wrist technique. This time we'll do it with the twelfth position, A minor pentatonic and A minor blues scales. So 65 beats per minute one more time. Same deal. Muting techniques and get those notes clearly played. Let me show it to you. Here we go. Three, four. Now as you play these two exercises and start using power wrist technique in all of your licks, don't worry so much about being completely precise. This technique is also supposed to have some, some uh, riot factor to it. It's supposed to have some danger. So if um, a note sneaks through where your muting technique is not completely perfect, that's okay. You know, if an open string uh, sneaks through or you get a note that is slightly dead or something like that, that's okay because the technique is about um, attitude. You know, a lot of your funk playing is based in attitude, your rhythm and your soloing, and this technique really exemplifies that. So it's meant to be something that's kind of dirty. So don't worry so much about missing a note here and there. All right, the other technique uh, to get things to come out, and definitely something that propels dynamics, is hybrid picking. And that simply is the use of the pick and your other fingers. Now, for these purposes, we're just going to use the second finger which I refer to as P2 in different instances when I'm teaching this technique. So what's going to happen is I'm going to pick a note and then I'm going to use the second finger to pluck a note or pick a note just with my finger and not my pick. What that does is gives me this seesaw of dynamics where I have this attack plus that attack. And what I start doing is start employing some fret hand techniques where I start cutting off the duration of that hybrid pick note. So I get the dynamics to pop, and I also get that, that tightness, you know, that syncopation and, and that I like to have in my playing, in both my rhythm and soloing playing. But in this case, just with soloing, <laughs> works out really nice. So I have something set up for you here in two exercises that employ both of those pentatonic scales. Let's check out the first one, which is exercise three. We'll stay at 65 beats per minute, and we're just going to come up and down uh, the 
fifth position A minor pentatonic scale. So I'll just do it for you here. I'll play it for you once. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> So if that's a technique that is something new for you, I would suggest playing that in eighth notes as opposed to sixteenth notes. If you're a little familiar with it, you can start to jump right in on that, or you can lower the tempo. Now, I'm going to take that technique you put in the twelfth fret, uh, twelfth position, and do that same A minor pentatonic scale, but this time with a different fingering. But the other thing is, if you notice this one I played a Jason string, so I, I set up the scale in a way that I played the shapes that are the scale gives me with the Jason strings. This time which gives me varying intervals. This time I'm going to do it here with the string skip. Same technique though, pick and catch that hybrid picked uh, finger. So I'll come up with another set of varying intervals, but it just gives it this wider sound, but I'm going to employ all the same techniques. Here's number four, 12th position minor pentatonic scale at 65 beats per minute. Here we go. Two, three, four. Notice at the end, I played an octave. Hold that thought, because we're going to jump uh, to another lesson in this section and check out what we can do with those. But before we do that, I want to hit you to some, uh, some very cool modal ideas, two essential modes in the next lesson.